All scripture is given by the inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is the good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Welcome to Thinking Biblically. This is the 14th day of October in the year of our Lord, 2023. And the situation in the world continues the way it's been. Utter madness. Let's begin with something good, like the words of Jesus Christ, the Jewish Messiah, and the Messiah, the Savior of the whole world, who died on a cross in order that to atone for the sins of the whole world, and then rose from the dead. His resurrection is a proof he has given to all men, that God has given to all men, that Jesus Christ indeed is the chosen one that was promised from the beginning, the Savior of the world. All right, and he is coming again, only this time in judgment. So make sure you uh, come to peace with God before. The king takes the judgment seat. He's coming as king of kings and lord of lords. Okay, uh, let's look at what he says here in Matthew chapter uh, 5. This is a Sermon on the Mount. Turn at verse 43. You have heard it was said, you shall love your neighbor and hate your enemy. But I say to you, Love your enemies, bless those who curse you, do good to those who hate you, and pray for those who spitefully use you and persecute you, that you may be sons of your Father in heaven, for he makes his sun to shine on the sun, S -U -N, to, uh, to shine on the evil and on the good, and sends rain on the just and the unjust. That's the words of the Son of God. This is God's will. How should we respond to enemies? Especially as individuals, to love them. God has ordained government in this fallen world to punish the wicked and to reward the good. But often the government is the wicked and engage in all kinds of evil things themselves, contrary to God's will. That God's will is not always done on earth. That's why Jesus taught us to pray, Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Because since the fall, much of what happens here is not the will of God. It's done contrary to his explicitly revealed will. Contrary to some so-called Christians and their ideologies, all right, so uh, what's going on today over there? Well, as I uh, revealed in the last couple of videos, and as I looked into it even closer, it turns out that Israel has the most radical uh, government they've ever had. And, uh, well, the people that, are, that Netanyahu put in his cabinet... Um, I don't think I can use the proper words to describe them on YouTube. <sighs> they are extremely radical. They are at least as radical as Hamas. And Hamas is pretty radical uh, and pretty ruthless, as we've seen. Again, some of the, you know, the uh, until the situation is documented properly, it's hard to know how much is. Uh, truth and how much is propaganda. You know, wars, you've seen all kinds of evil propaganda uh, just designed to stir passions, but not true. Like the Iraqis uh, dumping babies out of incubators in, uh, 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 where was that, Kuwait, 
and running off of the incubators back to Iraq. That was all lies, propaganda from the Kuwaiti government. Lies. Lies are evil. They are evil. Christians should seek the truth and only the truth. Christians, real Christians, have been given the love of truth by God. All liars will have their place in hell, according to the New Testament. All liars. Those who love and practice lying. <clears throat> so, Jesus says to for us to love our enemies. So, what is, you know, look at the situation in uh, Israel. If Israel did what their Messiah told them to do, he was addressing the Jewish people in the land at that time, uh, they would not have dispossessed the Palestinians. The idea that Israel belongs to the Jews is an outright lie. That is not what the scripture says. Uh, they're, uh, a bit, they're, God allowed them to remain in the land conditionally. Not unconditionally. The land belongs to him. All creation belongs to him. And God dispossessed Israel, the nation, several times because of their wickedness and rebellion against him. Given the radical nature of the Netanyahu government, that man uh, demonstrates that he is nothing but a political animal. Uh, in, in, that is not an anti-human expression, by the way. Maybe I should rephrase that. He's nothing but a highly political person. Political animal is a common expression, by the way, for people that aren't American. Uh, it means that you're, everything you do is political. That, that's your life, politics, and doing what politicians do, which is not, which is serving themselves and their own political interests. So uh, Netanyahu has demonstrated what kind of a person he is by uh, putting these radical terrorist Israeli elements uh, in charge of the government. Uh, uh, men like Ben Gavir, who is a, is a, uh, a holds to a terrorist view, holds to a uh, a view of eliminating the Palestinians one way or the other, either removing them from the land, well, removing them from uh, what he considers the land of Israel, one way or the other. They can leave. Or they can die, or they can convert, I suppose. Swear allegiance. I don't know if he'd actually allow this, the last one, because it's, it's, it's way beyond. Uh, it's, it's just a pure Jewish state is what these radicals seek. Under Jewish law, Halakha law, just like Sharia law for the Muslims. Not the same law, but the same idea. Uh, these are, uh, and, and these ideas are not supported by the majority of uh, the Jews in Israel or the Jews in the world, which is mostly in the United States. So here, uh, let me show you the latest thing I saw this morning. Uh, story again. This is this is an RT. So, which is one of the few reliable sources in the world today. Um, as far as news, this is there is no such thing in the United States anymore. There is no reliable news in the United States. It's all propaganda now. And in Europe, too, France, every place else. It's England, nothing but propaganda. Cannot believe it. Cannot trust it. You have to go digging for yourself. And look at other sources around the world and see what makes sense. What fits into, you know, the, the truth fits together. If it's, uh, if it doesn't have uh, 
a, a logic to it, if it doesn't have a, a, a basis in fact, it's not truth. So we look for the evidence and say, if, if the stories where they coincide, that's probably truth, especially if you get both sides saying the same thing or independent witnesses saying the same thing. So here is the story that uh, is dated, what is it, the 14th today. Of course, their 14th starts earlier than ours. IDF strikes hit Gaza evacuation comment, uh, convoy. So that's a statement by Hamas. UN calls Israeli's forced relocation order impossible and disastrous. Yes, well, if the statement was just from Hamas, it would be eh, you know, subject to doubt, okay? But it's not just from Hamas. Dozens of people, mostly women and children, have been injured and killed in Israeli airstrikes on evacuation convoys fleeing Gaza City. Now, Israel gave them 24 hours to leave Gaza City and go south. Is there? But that area is still, still under the Israeli siege. No food, no water, no fuel, no electricity, and if they could do it, no air. How long can you live without water? You can live 40 days without food. How can, well, not children, but. See, that's the other thing. They don't care. Israel does not care how many they kill. Well, actually, they do care. They want to kill as many as possible, apparently, because their actions show it. People can say one thing, but look at their deeds. Jesus said that about false teachers and false prophets. By their deeds, you will know them. Not by their words, by their deeds. By their fruit, you will know them. What they do, what they produce. The IDF has yet to respond. That's Israeli Defense Forces, the military to uh, respond to the accusations. Uh-huh. <laughs> After ordering more than one million people to leave the northern part of the enclave, the concentration camp, which is what Gaza is, it's a concentration camp, uh, very, the world's largest concentration camp, to save their lives. So Israel gave them 24 hours to get out. Over a million people. And go someplace where there's no food, no water, no shelter under Israeli siege also. Move south. you got 24 hours. Netanyahu has made it clear that he's not yet begun to smash Gaza. Worse is coming. Have you looked at the videos of the bombing? They are flattening the city. Flattening it. The tanks are lining up on the border. Israel's going to have a little bit of a revelation given to them by Hamas if they tried to move armor into that shattered city. Anybody that's familiar with the history of World War II and, say, Stalingrad, what happened to the Germans? They shat, you know, when you are uh, any side, when you have a destroyed city, the, a ruined city that's just nothing but rubble, that is almost impossible to dig opposition out of because every pile of concrete uh, turns into a place for soldiers to hide. And the worst sling you can have in, uh, if you're in a tank is soldiers, enemy soldiers around you on scene. Because an RPG at close range by somebody that knows how to use it will take a tank out no matter how modern the tank is. Or an explosive charge stuck to the belly. All kinds of things. And especially if you've got a, uh, an adversary that believes that, that uh, dying in uh, combat against the enemies of Allah is the only sure way to paradise. Israel will be bloodied if they do that. If they go in on the ground, they will be bloodied. And other countries have said, if you go in, we're in this war too. Like Hezbollah. I mean, there's already been some minor exchange, and some people have already said Hezbollah is in. No, no. 
No. They've got at least 40,000 sophisticated rockets and missiles. Guided weapons. Waiting. As deterrence. They'll use them. They've used them before. And Israel will have a two-front war or three-front war. And, uh, Saudi Arabia has already shelved the reconciliation with Israel, the American deal, the Biden plan. Oh, we'll give you money and weapons. <laughs> where, where do they have those? <laughs> so you, the United Nations, so this is not just Hamas's claim. The UN humanitarian body, OCHA, said several vehicles uh, of those evacuated in the north were hit, killing more than 40 people and injuring 150, citing data from health officials in Hamas governed Palestinian enclave. Okay, but they're on the, you know, uh, the UN is on site too. They've, the, a lot of the people that are trying to escape are in UN facilities, and Israel has ordered them evacuated too because they're going to smash the whole area. Uh, given the people in the government currently, the radicals, this is rapidly appearing to be an ethnic cleansing operation. To a genuine ethnic cleansing operations. Because uh, Gaza is trapped. They can't escape anywhere. They can't escape into Egypt. The, uh, the Egyptians have moved up army to prevent them spilling out into Egypt. And Israel has bombed uh, the crossing that goes into Egypt anyway to prevent uh, not only people fleeing, apparently, but also supplies coming in. This is a classic siege. Starve the city to death or until they completely surrender. Irrespect, and who dies first? The children. The children die first. They are the least able to survive starvation. Least able to survive with no water. The least able to survive exposure. They simply don't have the body mass. They're just simply not able. They will die quickly. And there are people on the Hamas side that the, the bigger catastrophe it is, uh, the, the better it serves, serves their purposes, too. So what's going on? Why would Israel order the people to evacuate south? 24 hours, which is utterly impractical. And then, if the reports are correct, actually strike people, convoys, leaving the area to move south. Well, if, if, they're, if the 24-hour evacuation is simply a cover to give them an excuse, saying, well, we told them to get out and they didn't, then it makes sense. Then because you don't really want them to leave. You want them to stay there so you can kill them. Remember the words of Netanyahu, and he's amped that up even further. This is vengeance. This is not justice. There's already been about equal deaths on both sides now. This is not justice. This is vengeance. And an excuse for ethnic cleansing. Given the people he's put in power in Israel. Given the people in his cabinet. Given the fact that Ben Gazir, the Minister of Internal Security, the police and everything else, provoked this deliberately. Of course, they didn't know exactly what the results would be, but he provoked the Palestinians, the Muslims in particular, on the Temple Mount on the Thursday prior to the Friday or Saturday that this thing took place. And he is a terrorist. He has, uh, worships terrorists. 
Look up the Wikipedia page. Look up the Wikipedia page on the 37th Israeli government. See the deals that Netanyahu, um, uh, with pe the people that Netanyahu made deals with in order to get a majority in parliament, to put himself in power. This is the worst example of a politician that I can possibly think of. And want to think, once upon a time, I met the man and shook his hand. In passing. This is someone that is an enemy of his own people. Through his actions, he is simply concerned about himself. Which is, uh, of course, he's not a Christian, but this would, that's, one, that's one of the problems. That, uh, a true Christian is not in the scripture. For all you who do not know, the scripture emphatically teaches us that we're not to be concerned solely about ourselves, but also the interests of others. Even our enemies. We don't want bad things to happen to our enemies. We want them to repent and turn to Christ and be saved. Saved like we were. We're no better than them. We, we were the same. But when you come to Christ, he, he makes changes in you, in your heart. See, it's not just an ideology. It's not just a religious system. It's God himself saving people. Transforming us. Partially at this time fully when he returns, which appears to be coming quickly. So the, uh, these incidents, it says here, prompted many, this is from the United Nations, many people uh, to abandon their evacuation efforts and return home, the UN agency said. Again, they're on the ground there in the middle of it. Uh, as heavy Israeli bombardments from air, sea, and land have continued almost interrupted. Israel has not ceased fire to enable people to eva uh, evacuate. They don't want people to evacuate, apparently. They want to kill them all. I think that that is what's being implied by their actions. And the people that Netanyahu put in government. People that worship murderous terrorists, like Ben Gavir. And the fact that Netanyahu granted him his own private militia under his own personal command is scary. There has been, uh, last I heard, there was 44 Palestinians that had been murdered in the West Bank by settlers and the military. See, they're on a rampage of, of, of revenge. Just gunning people down, apparently. Because we don't get much details. Israel doesn't want us to know what they're doing. And the United States government, there was a memo put out. I wonder if it's on here. Uh, oh, by the way, uh, uh, President Putin of Russia condemned... Uh, uh, the Hamas attack on Israel is unprecedented cruelty. So it's not like he's... He recognizes the thing, what it was. And it was. It was terribly cruel. Apparently, based on the stories that have come out. And I, no doubt, no doubt, this is uh, a vengeance on both sides. That was vengeance on Israel and, you know, the people that have been in a prison camp a concentration camp, a ghetto, uh, a la the Warsaw Ghetto, for years and years and years, and it's obvious Israel is uh, just intending to keep them there, there for indefinitely uh, under those conditions. And now it, they have an excuse to, to basically... You know, this is not the first time Israel has smashed... Uh, uh, what, do they, what do they call them before... Um, uh, refugee camps in other countries, like in Lebanon, went in and massacred or had their allied, uh, quote, quote, unquote, Christian militia go in and, and massacre while they looked on and smiled, apparently. 
see that these these are if you're a Christian, you have to realize we're dealing with people that on both sides that do not have Christian values. Most Christians, I don't think, have Christian values. Just look at the, this is people that claim this is a Christian country. It is no, it is not. Look at its history. It's real history. Not the history they teach you in grade school. The real history of America. The genocidal history of America. If somebody's in your way, Americans historically have eliminated them. Just like has happened to the Palestinians. Did it here first. The Native Americans. Andrew Jackson, who is a favorite of Donald Trump. Deported all the Native Americans west of the Mississippi River. Uh, this was back in the early 1800s. Peaceful or not, he didn't care. He hated them. And the Supreme Court tried to stop them, and he just ignored them. It's like, uh, how, many force, how many troops does the Supreme Court have? See, this is a, a, an old practice in the United States, too. This is not a Christian country. It has no Christian values. Never has had. They do not listen to Christ any more than Israel listens to their Messiah, Jesus Christ. Love your enemies. Jackson hated the Native Americans, whether they were guilty of anything or not. There were as many peaceful tribes that were quite sophisticated, like the Cherokee. Didn't save them at all. This was an ongoing thing. And in fact, the American uh, treatment of the natives was uh, an inspiration for Hitler in his campaign to deal with the uh, non-Aryans, the lesser, not quite human races, according to him. And the same attitude is now present in Israel. now in power in Israel. So given that, one must, one can reasonably suspect that Israel is engaged in an ethnic cleansing operation wants to eliminate Gaza and its inhabitants. Because that's what the, they're doing. It doesn't matter what they say, what are they doing? Christians, if you are supporting Israel, you are supporting the devil because that's who they're serving. Scripture says the devil comes to steal, to kill, and to destroy. He just loves this stuff. So every person that dies, the person outside of faith in Christ is not going to heaven. As far as he's concerned, as far as the devil is concerned, everyone he can kill who hasn't come to faith in Christ is somebody that's going to be with him in hell. He is won, in his mind, by doing that. He is prevented. See, the scripture clearly says, clearly teaches, emphatically teaches in the New Testament, that God does not desire that any should be lost, but all men should be saved. That is the will of God. That's why he sent Jesus Christ into the world. That's why he died on that cross for the sins of the entire world. Because it is not the desire of God that anyone should spend eternity in hell. But it's Satan's desire, because he's going there, not to rule, but he's going there and he wants to, his vengeance against God is to take as many human beings with him as he can. You understand that. You should. Unless you're going to some so-called church like Joel Osteen's. Or you're listening to Calvinists.
We cannot support them. And Congress is almost unanimous, with a few exceptions, that, uh, in support of Israel. Unconditional. And there was a, what, a news out? Let's see if it shows up here at all. Um, I don't know if that'll show on here. The word is out in Washington, the administration, uh, the diplomatic word, that there's nobody supposed to to call for... Ah, um, yeah, here it is. Here's the article. Again, this is at the R2 website. Somebody, well, that's a Russian website. Well, so what? Russia is a Christian nation. Now, yeah, it's returned. They had enough of the communist atheists, although there are communist atheists in Russia still. They're not illegal. There's a political communist party. Uh, there's more freedom there in a lot of ways than there is here. There are people leaving Europe. There are Christians leaving Europe and some in the United States and moving to Russia. Believe it or not, it's true. Not many, but it's happening. Why? You look at what's going on in Europe. Look what's going on in the United States. Look what's going on in Canada. That tyrant Trudeau. I mean, the the, the you know, it's it's an absolute totalitarian, uh, Orwellian mindset. Uh, if if you if you thought crimes, if you vary from the official view on things, you're to be suppressed. Moving in that direction. U.S. diplomats told to avoid calls for Gaza ceasefire. Oh, God forbid that people stop killing each other. See what the United States is? See why I say Satan rules in Washington? This is the devil. A memo, uh, he's the one behind it, the spiritual power that's that's moving. The scripture tells us in the New Testament that Satan, who is called the God of this age, a small g, not the real God, a fallen angel. And the, the Jewish, under, uh, the, the, the Muslims understand this too. He is working in the sons of disobedience, the sons of Adam, fallen humanity, to do his will. He controls them. As he told Jesus, all these nations have been given over to me. And I can give their authority to give them to whoever I want when he tempted the Messiah. Jesus didn't contest that. He said, Be gone. Be gone. Jesus is coming back to claim it because it's his and he's going to take it back. He's coming not as a savior not as a baby in a manger, but as the King of kings and the Lord of lords with the armies of heaven. Not that he needs any help, because he is God. The world will find that out. Both man and God. One God. Muslims, Christians only believe in one God. But it's a complicated idea okay the, the trinity doesn't not three gods one god who has made himself known to us and that's not the best way to put it but i'm trying to keep it simple as the father the son and the holy spirit the son is god coming in the flesh he is the word of god made flesh and dwelt among us and died on the cross his body died god didn't die his body died it took on a human body a human nature in order to be the atonement, a sinless human being, to atone for the sins of the sinners, for the sins of the children of Adam. And he accomplished that. And he demonstrated it by rising from the dead. In other words, he had fully atoned for the sins of, of the world, and, his, uh, and he had no sin. And because he took the sins upon him, if he hadn't accomplished that atonement, if what he did was not acceptable to God, as an offering for sin, he would not have been able to rise from the dead. That is the proof that God has given to all nations that Jesus is indeed 
the promised one, the Messiah, the Savior, not just of Israel, but of the world, and the one who has been appointed to judge the world in righteousness, in justice. Now that should strike a little fear into some people who love injustice. So the United States State Department has advised diplomats to avoid calling for de-escalation or a ceasefire in Gaza amid continued fighting between Israel and the Palestinian militants. Well, it's the Israeli militants versus the Palestinian militants here. Multiple media outlets have reported U.S. officials have voiced loud support for the Jewish state's right to self-defense. It is not self-defense at this point. If you're attacked and you respond in force to stop the attack, that is self-defense. Even in the law of Moses, if a man comes into your house at night, breaks into your house, and you strike him down, that is not murder. But if you go out the next day, when he's left, if he, he flees and he and he's uh, and he's leaves, and you go out and hunt him down and strike him dead, that is murder. So a a person that whatever his motivation, he breaks into your house in the dark and you kill him, that's self defense because you don't obviously what he's done is is not a, a demonstration he's not interested in your welfare. And you don't know what he's going to do. That's self-defense. But if you hunt him down after he's fled and kill him, that is not self-defense. Israel is not engaged in self-defense. Hamas has never been a serious threat to the existence of Israel. They, they're not that big. To to hunt down those who are, and, and almost all those who actually were engaged in the attack are dead. There was like 1,500. So Israel's response is to flatten the entire city. And apparently kill as many as they can, which they'd like to apparently, given the radicals in charge, ethnic cleanse the whole state of Israel. That's their end game. To drive them all out or kill them all. That is their end game. That's their stated end game. To ethnically cleanse Israel. Just look at these people. See the ideology of, of Kahani, whom the current uh, Minister of Internal Security uh, is a devotee of. Just look at the Wikipedia page on Ben Gavir. Look at it. Then tell me you're going to support him. This Israeli government. He provoked the whole thing. Deliberate provocation to do what? Well, why why do you provoke the other side to do something in order to justify a response? that will eliminate them. That's why a, that's what a provocateur does. He seeks to uh, incite people to, to commit actions that will allow the authorities to destroy them, to justify destroying them. That's what we're seeing. That's what the facts show us. That's what the ideology of these people Netanyahu is put in authority is to ethnically cleanse Israel and create a religious Zionist state. Where Halakha or Halakha law, Jewish law, religious law prevails, just like uh, Muslims that want to establish a Sharia state where Sharia law prevails.
The evidence is right before our eyes. You can go look it all up on Wikipedia without having to go into any arcane sources. So you support Israel? Engaging in genocide? Engaged in ethnic cleansing? Because that's the only rational conclusion anybody can draw at this point. Given the actions of the people in charge. And America, because we have an exceedingly See, why would Israel do this at, time, at this time? Because they know we have a headless government with an exceedingly weak individual that can be manipulated very easily. He is not, obviously not in uh, fully uh, in control of his capacity. A man who has demonstrated a total lack of moral character throughout his entire career, even before that, in college. This is not a man of uh, moral fiber. This is a utterly self-interested descendant of Adam, all the worst that that entails. And so all the cards have fallen in place. So Israel has apparently decided this is the time because we're not going to have a better opportunity. And Hamas fell into the trap by responding to a provocation in an over-the-top manner, which is exactly what these radicals in the Netanyahu government And Netanyahu is making it clear he's not yet begun to destroy Gaza. Publicly stated it. And again, I think this whole 24 hours to get out, to go where, is just political cover. So they can say, we told them to leave. If they die in Gaza, it's their own fault. Well, there is a God in heaven who sees this. And that God judges the world constantly. He will repay. As you sow, so shall you reap. Hamas is reaping, and then Israel will reap. God has often used the enemies of Israel as his rod to punish his own people. But Israel today is not God's people. They are cut off because they rejected the Messiah. The law of Moses is very clear. Moses says there is another who will come who is uh, like unto me. And everyone who will not hear that prophet shall be cut off. Well, that prophet was Jesus Christ, the Messiah, Yeshua HaMashiach. He came, fulfilled the prophecies, and then gave his own life, his own blood, as a sacrifice for the sins, not only of his people, Israel, but of the sins of the entire world. Because God's plan is much bigger than that small sliver of land and 6 million or 12 million people, you know, 6 million or so in Israel proper. No, God's plan is much bigger than that. God's plan was, re was to restore what was lost at the fall of humanity. God's purpose is to put things back the way he created them to be. His plan from the beginning. Let us make man in our image. In the image of God, he created him. Male and female created he them. And let them rule. They were ruling under God. We are those who are in, belong to the Messiah, are his temple. See, we don't worry about that, that uh, ruin or that site where the temple stood in Jerusalem. 
because we are the temple of God. God does not dwell in houses made by human hand. He doesn't dwell in buildings of stone. He dwells in people, people that belong to him, people that he has cleansed, people that he has atoned for their sins. That is, those are true Christians. Most Christians in this world are not true Christians. They do not know God. God does not know them. They just outwardly have the name. Belong to an organization or something. But they're not true Christians. You must be born again. God has to do a work in your heart, in your life. God has to cleanse you. And he's provided all that as a free gift to, to whomever will call upon him. For it shall come to pass that whoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. And God gives eternal life to those who accept him, who accept Jesus, the Messiah, trust in him and what he did. Gives him freely eternal life. No cost to us. He already paid the price on the cross. And it's open to everyone in the entire world, not to a particular people, to everyone. He is calling people out of every nation, tribe, and tongue to be his people. The door is open. Do not refuse the offer. Call upon Jesus Christ. Whatever that name is in your local language. To save you from your sins. To grant you entrance into his new covenant that Jesus purchased on that cross with his own blood. God became flesh. God became a man for the purpose of dying as a sinless man that he might atone for the sins of the world and restore you to God, restore you to a proper relationship with God.